Hi families, um, welcome to a summarization of our November family group uh, lesson reviews. Uh, quickly, we are doing lessons three and four this month, so I chose to highlight some of the scripture and a couple of the activities that you might find easy to squeeze into your everyday lives. So we'll start for the scripture for this month is for God, all things are possible. And that's from Matthew 19, 36. Um, and that's one of the recommended scriptures for this month. Another one um, in the children's activity book is Lord teach us to pray. And that's a really easy way to open up a discussion, especially with your little ones about what it means to pray, how they can work that into their daily lives, and how it's important to learn different ways to pray. So for everybody, kids and grown-ups, here's a challenge I have for you. So these are called car conversations, and these are suggestions from the parent handbook. Um, but this is just breaking down a couple really easy ones. So kids or parents, you can come up and start the conversation highlighting these questions. So the first one is, what are some important moments in your life? So what's big? What's important to you? Why should you pray to God before or even when they happen? So it might be someone's birth or someone's passing. It might be before a big test or competition. How can you incorporate that and why do we do it? Great one for Thanksgiving and November, the season of thankfulness is what are you most thankful for? How can you show God that you are thankful for what he has given us? This is a big conversation we have sometimes. And how are you showing me that you're thankful? We get very used to just receiving things, but actually showing that gratitude is something we all need to practice a little more of. And then finally, the third car conversation starter is how can you improve or change some bad habits? So especially in the season of reflection, we try to change ourselves for the better all the time. And this really ties into the conversion of heart, which is one of the activities that you may choose to do this month. Moving right along, these two activities are from lesson three. They're activity one and two. So if you're a kiddo and you're watching this, even our really young ones, you're going to look at page 29, I think it is, or 27. It's so small on my screen. Um, Mary and Joseph taught Jesus how to pray. This is great activity for the little ones and coloring and just having a really simple conversation. And for our bigger or older siblings, Jesus prays to God the Father, which involves a little more work. You're going to look at the Bible and find some scripture and write down your responses on that one. So a little bit um, about it is... Think of Jesus when he was growing up, okay? He had his mom, Mary, and his foster father on earth, Joseph. We all know he had his father in heaven, but his foster father on earth was teaching him, along with Mary, all the things you learn when you're growing up. So what do you learn to do when you're really, really little and you're first starting out? You learn to talk, you learn to walk, you learn to do all those little things, dump bins of toys everywhere, right? Then you learn more and more as you grow. Well, one of the most important things that Jesus learned from Mary was how to pray. So we learn by watching our parents all the time. And Jesus got to watch his mom pray. That's how he learned. So our little ones... You can see that picture of Joseph and Mary teaching Jesus how to pray. So just teaching him to fold his hands, kneel, and all those important things. If you're one of the older ones, you can also look at page 28 in the activity book. 
those scripture passages, you've got to kind of go through. I'd really suggest putting some post-it notes on them, highlighting them, and finding them and writing them down. That might be a better conversation one-on-one -on -one with mom or dad so that you can really understand those specific passages. If we jump ahead to lesson four and activity two, there's a link at the bottom of this slide, or you can type it in, and it's a really cool video on emperor penguins, kind of perfect as we get into our cooler weather, end of fall, beginning of winter. But did you know that emperor penguins are a great example of a father's love? So emperor penguin dads have a really important job. They're super responsible when their baby is going to be born or hatch out of their egg. Okay, the female penguin will lay the egg and then it's the dad's responsibility to keep track of that egg, protect it, keep it warm and keep it safe for two whole months. You know what the mom's doing during that time? She goes all the way to the ocean so that she can fill up her belly and make lots of good food, store lots of food for the baby for when she makes her way back to the dad and the new hatched penguin. So they work together to bring this new baby penguin into the world, okay? Those daddy penguins keep their feet nice and flat and that egg's just going to balance on top of there. If you've ever watched the movie Happy Feet, it kind of shows it really well too. So they have to keep it warm. They face freezing winds. They are so hungry, not eating for two whole months. They face all sorts of challenges, but they keep doing it because they are warm, loving parents. So just think about all those ways that your mom and dad sacrifice and do things to help keep you safe and warm, okay? So if you look at page 43, which is the one I have clipped up here, it has the I am loved. So it has the penguin image and you get to draw in the belly of the penguin there for your dad or anyone special who takes care of you. And you get to write those sentences at the bottom. Next one I'd like to focus on is a lesson for activity four. So God is the father of all. And there's some really great images on this page that we're going to talk about. But first, think of when you pray the Lord's Prayer or Our Father, you know that one. We don't say my father, we say our father. So what does that really mean? That means that God is for everybody everyone you me your neighbor the person at the grocery store for everyone so what does it mean if god is the father of everyone and desires that we should all be with him in heaven why do you think he wants that how do you think god would want us to treat our brothers and sisters. Most of you have brothers and sisters at home, right? How does God want you to be treating them? Finally, if you're a little bit older, you can come up with a list of ways you can treat people around you. So that can be other brothers and sisters, maybe not by blood or you share the same parents, but other people who are in our lives in God's family. Okay, let's see if you can practice at least one of those things that you come up with on your list. If you're a little bit younger, you can look at this picture 
in your activity book on page 44, you need to circle the ways that people should behave if they are really loving their brothers and sisters. So take a look at those pictures and what makes sense. What look like helpers and people who love? Since we talk so much about the Lord's Prayer, here's an opportunity for you to practice saying it. It's always good to remember it if you're an older sibling or child. And for our younger ones, it's always good to start practicing memorizing the Lord's Prayer. So you can pray this together or you can silently read it to yourself. Um, that's all I have. Um, pretty short, kept it under 15 minutes. Uh, but I hope this helps guide you, our young learners and our parents, in a couple ideas to help uh, navigate our lessons for the month of November. Don't forget you're posting some of the lessons that you've completed, like my Eliana's already done her picture here and she wrote her sentence. Um, those are going in the November Flipgrid and middle of the month we have our two family faith gatherings. So have a wonderful week. I will be in touch with you all soon. See you.